Hello, lovely humans. Jen Foxbot here. Welcome to Math Mondays. In this video, we are going to talk about neural networks. Woo! So this is apt timing because it is a topic that falls under artificial intelligence or AI. So I'm going to hypothesize that y'all have heard about OpenAI, ChatGPT, um, Google Bard. AI is making headlines all over the place, whether you are in tech or not. So let's take the opportunity to understand what these pieces of technology, what these tools actually are, and how they're built. Neural networks are the underlying foundation or kind of the architecture of pretty much all modern large language models, or LLMs for short, because I like to be lazy, like ChatGPT and a lot of the models that Google and um, Facebook or Meta are putting out. So first of all, well, let's talk about why we should care, what they are, and how they work. This is an introductory video, so it'll be fairly high level. Um, we, we'll get into some math in a little bit. So first, why should we care? Well, if you check out some of my earlier videos on machine learning, you'll notice that we're dealing with fairly small uh, sets of features, or basically like if we are trying to predict the uh, price of a house or something like that, we don't necessarily need a ton of features. But let's say we want to do something a little more complicated, like we want to predict the health of an ecosystem. That's going to require a lot more features, things like what is the amount of rainfall per year? What is the average light intensity on a given day? Um, what is the soil? What are the soil conditions like? And you could break even that out into many different features. What other creatures are present? And so on and so forth. And so neural networks are a more efficient way of handling lots and lots of features, like hundreds, thousands, or even more features um, of a particular data set. And the other thing is that, hold on, let me check my notes. The other thing is that um, we need, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, the other thing, the other thing, yes. Um, it, neural networks are also really useful in the same way that they help us be more efficient with data sets with lots of features. They're a lot more efficient for th doing things like analyzing images, because typically when we're analyzing an image with a computer, right, like we have to, we can't just be like, hey, computer, look at this image. It doesn't as, have eyes like we do. Well, and, and technically our brain will process that visual information and then put together a cohesive picture. So we kind of have to do the same thing for a computer. We have to take an image and break it down into pixels. And like, that's a lot of pixels. And so if we were to do that with our traditional machine learning um, uh, formulas and, and models, the traditional machine learning architecture, it would be really, really computationally expensive, like really time consuming, involve a ton of computers and like compute thing, like it would be computing things till the end of time or whatever. So neural networks are basically a way to uh, use inspiration from the world around us, specifically the way that brains are designed, to make something that is a little bit more efficient at handling a ton of big data sets. So that's pretty much what neural networks are. They are algorithms that try to mimic the brain. So the hypothesis that goes into this, because let's be real, we're still learning a lot about the brain. Um, we're, we're getting there and it's pretty cool, but we still have a lot more to learn. And I love that most of it is a mystery. So our hypothesis is that we can create kind of one learning algorithm. Our brain is really good at learning things, right? And there's a lot of examples and experiments that have shown that you can actually take different parts of your brain and retrain it to do different things. So it's what we kind of like to call plastic. Like it can adapt very well. And so, uh, that's the goal, is to create one architecture that we can use to do lots of different things. Um, and so how do we actually model this? All right, what does this look like? What does a neural network look like? So this is part three, yay. Okay, so we have our artificial neuron here. I'm gonna give it a little smiley face. 
Okay, so this is, I'm going to put it in quotes. This is our neuron. It's not, you know, this is a representation. And then we have a bunch of inputs. Da, 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 da. This is our data. So we'll call these like x1, x2, x3. We also have like an x not up here. Um, that's always going to be one. We'll get into that later. Um, but these are our inputs, aka this is data. Yay, data. Da, da, da. And then um, this goes out to generate our hypothesis function. So h theta of x. Um, and this is basically when you take a set of data inputs, the, the artificial neuron does some calculations on it or does some analysis on it, and then uh, it puts out a prediction. And if you're just jumping in to machine learning, the predictions in machine learning um, at this level are called our hypothesis. So this is the hypothesis um, or the output from our data and the number crunching that our neuron did. Um, so our inputs are going to be of a form um, like a, a matrix like this. So you have x0, x1, x2, all the way to however many uh, features you have or pixels you have in your image. And then our parameters are similarly going to be um, a matrix of parameters. So theta 1, theta 2, oh, I'm so lazy, to theta n, depending on um, how large of a uh, formula you have coming out the end. Okay, so this is one neuron. And we're talking about neural networks, which is plural. Da, 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 da. Okay, so if we take our basic picture and we map it to many neurons, let's bring in some colors because colors are fun. Okay, so our neurons are going to be purple. We have one, two, three for now, and we'll give them all little smiley faces because why not? They're not alive. Our artificial neurons definitely aren't alive, but like it's fun and cute. So bear with me. Okay. Um, actually, I want to use yellow because yellow goes nice with purple. Okay. So now we have our inputs. So we have like X1, X2, and X3. And so with the multiple neurons, each of our inputs has to map to each of our neurons. Ooh, wait, let's add some labels too. So these um, are our neurons. I hope that's not too small. I need to write a lot. That might be a little too small. Okay, these are our neurons, our tiny neurons. These are our inputs. I'll write that bigger for you. Okay. Um, so all of our inputs have to map to all of our neurons. So X1 has to map to, to neuron number one, has to map to neuron number two, and it has to map to neuron number three. Um, so we'll say this is one, two, and three. And um, same with x2, maps to 1, 2, and 3, and 3 has to map to 1, 2, and 3. Boom. Okay. And so then on the way out, um, we have an output neuron. Let's grab another color for this. Um, so we have our output neuron, and the results of our uh, like neurons in the middle all map to this one. And so then... This is our output. And our output is what gives us our hypothesis function. I'm running out of space, h theta of x. OK, so um, we can also call these layers. So the inputs are layer 1. It's kind of a funny one. It's got a little hat to it, or maybe a beak or something. Um, this is a hidden layer because we don't see it, quote unquote. We see the inputs, we see the output, but we don't see the neurons in the middle. So this is a hidden layer two. And then th this is our output layer three. Okay, so this neural network has three layers, two of which we can see and one that's hidden. Um, so in our hidden layer, we have three neurons, which we can represent like this. So, um, we have A, 
which is of layer two. Um, so we have the first one. And then we have a, we have number two, which is also in layer two. So we're going to give it a superscript of two. And we have a of three, neuron of, uh, neuron number three, which is still in layer two. So the layer would be the superscript and the number, the number neuron um, would be the subscript. Okay, so that's kind of your general overview without getting into too much math of what a neural network actually is, how it is designed. And most neural networks these days are composed of many, many hidden layers with many, 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 many neurons. Like we're, when we're talking parameters, we're typically talking the number of neurons. Um, so a lot, billions, they're very big. But that also means that they can store a lot of data, which enables them to, you know, do some really complex things like understand user intent. Or basically, if I say something to ChatGPT um, or type something, depending on your interface, then ChatGPT can take that input and predict a well, it depends on how you want to use the word, but intelligent response. It can predict an accurate response that is going to be helpful, hopefully, for what I am asking it to do or to um, tell me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I will leave you with a little bit of a teaser if you want to learn more. Um, so, and we'll get into this in the next video, but if you're like, I am mathed out, that's cool. Um, thank you for watching and you can peace out here. Um, but basically, uh, in the next video, we'll get more into how we actually represent these different layers. And we're going to use the, um, the sig, the sigmoid function, which is G of Z, which equals one over one plus E to the negative Z. Let me just double check that that is right. Yes. And it has, when you plot this, it looks like this on a graph. Um, so if this is G of Z and this is Z, this is one, this is going to be 0 0.5. So the sigmoid function will look like this. It crosses right there. And so for negative values, um, it, it uh, tends to zero. And for positive values of Z, it tends to one. And, you know, you can modify this function to expand it or, or you know, extend it so it crosses the vertical axis at a different point. Um, but basically, this we will use this for our hypothesis function. So our hypothesis function will look like this, 1 over 1 plus e to the negative theta, um, which is going to be a matrix. Um, hold on. Da, 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 theta t um, times x. And so basically, each of the neurons will have one of these functions. Um, and it will tell us how much that neuron is activated or basically how much that neuron is turned on. So if I draw my little smiley neuron, oops, <laughs> that's a theta, that's funny. So if I draw my little smiley neuron, neuron if we have a value that's very um, negative, it will be like, oh, this neuron doesn't play too much into the output. But if the value of our hypothesis function is very positive, it will tend towards one, which will basically say, yes, this neuron has a lot of impact into the output. Um, so zero is kind of like not a lot of influence. One is a lot of influence. Okay. And each neuron has one of these activation functions. All right. Little tidbit, little, little sneak preview. Cool. Okay. Please let me know if you have any questions about, uh, well, the introduction to neural networks, or if there are specific topics within the mathematics of AI that you'd like me to get to. Um, I have a personal learning goal of better understanding the transformer architecture, which is what GPT and pretty much most of the major uh, modern large language models, and I'll say in 2023, at the end of 2023, because this stuff is changing super quick. Um, but that's the transformer architecture is what uh, GPT and most of our current LLMs are based on. So that's my personal learning goal. So that's where I'm trying to go to. There are other areas you want to cover? Please let me know. All right. Thank you for hanging out with me and for learning more about neural networks with me.
See you next time, friends. Bye.